Hi, I'm Damien Wills, owner and chief pilot of GoFly Aviation. Today's lesson is effects of controls. So the aim of today's lesson is to teach you how to operate the controls and observe the effect they have on the aircraft. It's actually our first formal flight lesson. Couple of things to note. When we're flying, the horizon is always our primary reference and the distance between the nose of the aircraft and the horizon we call our attitude. Other things to note during your flight training is that between the student and the instructor, when the instructor wants you to have control of the aircraft, the instructor will say, you have control. So you take, you take the controls and you ought to say to the instructor, I have control. When the instructor wants the controls back, he'll say, I have control. And you say, you have control. That way everyone's sure on who's, no, no one's unsure of who's flying the aircraft at any given time. Okay, let's go to our aircraft model just to have a look at our control surfaces today. So here's our model here. So on the outward part of the wing, we have what we call our ailerons. Okay, and they're controlled by our control column inside. We move the control column to the left or right. We also have our elevator at the back of the aircraft. And we control the elevator by moving the control column forward and rearward. We also have our rudder. And we control our rudder with our rudder pedals. By moving the rudder pedals to the right or left, that moves the rudder here as well. We also have our flaps which is situated on the uh, inward part of the wing, like such. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at to, um, is the different, what we call, axes uh, that we have on the aircraft. Now, this, will, this might seem a bit confusing at first, but it'll make more sense towards the end of the lesson. Okay, the first axis we're going to look at is our normal axis, and the normal axis moves down towards from the top to the bottom of the aircraft, like such, in a, in a straight line. Okay. Then we have what we call our lateral axis, and the lateral axis moves along the wing from one wing to the other. And we also have our longitudinal axis, which moves from the front of the aircraft all the way back to the back of the aircraft. In relation to lift, now how a wing creates lift is quite complex, but the most simple way to, to look at how a wing creates lift is the fact that our wing shape is curved, when the airflow hits the wing, it speeds up over the wing, causing a low pressure on top of the wing, which causes the aircraft to lift. There are, there are a few more reasons why we have lift, but that's the most basic ex explanation for today's lesson. Okay, the first thing I'll look at today is the primary effect of our elevator. So once again, let's look at the model of the aircraft, and this is, this is simulating our control column. Here's our elevator at the back here. When I move the control column rearward, the nose pitches up in relation to the horizon and the gap between the nose and the horizon gets smaller. When I move the control column forward, the nose pitches down in relation to the horizon and the gap between the nose and the horizon gets bigger. So we can say that the primary effect of our elevator is pitch. The, pitch will, the nose will pitch up or down in relation to the horizon. Okay, we're now going to look at the primary effect of our ailerons, which is situated out here. So when I move the control column to the right, the aircraft will roll to the right. When I move the control column to the left, the aircraft will roll to the left. So we can say that the primary effect of our ailerons is roll to the right or left. We're now going to look at our primary effect of our rudder at the back of the aircraft here. So as I discussed before, we control our rudder with our rudder pedals. So when I apply pressure on the right rudder, the nose of the aircraft will yaw to the right, like such. And when I apply pressure on the left rudder pedal, the nose will yaw to the left. So we can say the primary effect of our rudder is yawing to the right or left. Okay, that's, that's pretty straightforward, but we also have what we call secondary or further effects of the aircraft. So we're gonna look at the further effects of our uh, elevator first of all. So as we discussed before, when I move the control column rearward, the nose pitches up in relation to the horizon. And a further effect is that we'll also start to slow down. So our airspeed will start to decrease. And likewise, when I move the control column forward, the nose will pitch down in relation to the horizon and my airspeed will start to increase. So a further effect of our elevator is that the airspeed will either decrease if the nose pitches up or it'll increase if the nose pitches down. Okay, we're now gonna look at the um, secondary effect of our ailerons. 
So let's look at the ailerons again. When I move the control column to the right, we know the primary effect is that the aircraft will roll to the right. If I actually let go of the controls in the air at that point in time, what will tend to happen is that the aircraft will then slip down towards the lower wing and then it will yaw in that direction at the same time. Now the reason it does this is when we roll, gravity takes over, we'll start to slip. We have a lot of airflow hitting the back rudder area here and that tends to yaw the nose in that direction as well. So our secondary effect of roll is that when we roll the aircraft, the aircraft will roll, then slip and then yaw. So secondary effect is slip and then yaw. And the same thing happens obviously if we roll the aircraft to the left, we slip and then yaw in that direction as well. Pretty straightforward. So now we're gonna look at the secondary effect of our rudder. So when I apply pressure on the right rudder pedal, we know that the aircraft will yaw through the air like such. So what tends to happen is when we first yaw, we tend to skid through the air. Unlike a boat, water is not as, it doesn't have as much, uh, sorry, air doesn't have as much drag as water. So we're actually gonna skid through the air like such. So a couple of things happen as we yaw. The first thing that happens is this wing will accelerate slightly more than this wing. So we're gonna actually produce a bit more lift on this wing as we yaw to the right. And also the airflow is disturbed on this wing here due to the yawing moment. So we actually lose a little bit of lift on this side. So what tends to happen is when we yaw to the right, the aircraft will then roll at the same time. Likewise, when I yaw to the left, the aircraft yaws. We start skidding through the air. We get a little bit more lift being produced on the right wing here and a bit le less lift being produced on the left wing and the aircraft will roll to the left. So our secondary effect of yaw is that we'll yaw, skid through the air and then roll. Okay, now we also have an effect, uh, the airflow has an effect on the aircraft as well. So the aircraft designers have designed it so when we're cruising in our normal um, cruise speed, which is around about 100 knots in the sling aircraft, the controls will actually feel quite firm and responsive. Okay, and that's due to the airflow flowing over these control surfaces. However, if I move to a slower airspeed, we're going to have less airflow moving over the control surfaces. So those control surfaces are going to feel less firm and less responsive. When we have a word for that, we call it sloppy. So at slower rear speed, those controls will feel quite sloppy and less responsive. Now if we reverse that and move to a higher rear speed, say a higher rear speed above our normal cruise speed of 100 knots, we're gonna have more airflow moving, moving, moving over those control surfaces, and those control surfaces are gonna feel more firm and more responsive. So we already know that we can start to get a sense of how fast we're traveling through the air just by the feedback through the controls. If they're feeling quite sloppy and unresponsive, we know we're getting slower. If they're feeling more firm and more responsive, we know we've, we're moving at a faster speed. Now there may be some phases of flight where some of the control services might feel quite firm and the other control services might feel quite sloppy. Now a good example is on takeoff for instance. So takeoff, we've got a lot of power being produced and we've got a lot of airflow being produced by the propeller and this airflow tends to hit our elevator and rudder area. So that actually, on takeoff, the actual rudder and elevator can feel quite firm and responsive. However, the ailerons out here don't actually, aren't affected by that, that propeller slipstream, we call it. So they may actually feel quite sloppy. So on, on takeoff, you may feel that the rudder and elevator are quite sensitive and quite firm and responsive. However, the ailerons can still be quite sloppy. We're now going to look at the effect that the propeller and power has on the aircraft. So put it simply, in the, in the um, Rotax engine on the sling aircraft, when we start the engine, the um, uh, propeller moves uh, clockwise in relation to the pilot, and that causes the airflow to move around the airframe, and actually ends up hitting the back rudder area, like such. Now the aircraft design has been quite smart, so for normal cruise flight, which we spend most of our time, which is around 100 knots, they know that the pilot doesn't want to be using rudder all the time to keep that from yawing with that slipstream hitting the back of the rudder. So they actually designed it so they've offset the engine a few degrees in the aircraft to offset that yawing moment so the aircraft flies straight. However, if we're sitting at normal cruise speed of 100 knots and we increase that power, we're going to increase the slipstream effect over the aircraft 
and the amount of force on that rudder area. And the nose is gonna to wanna to yaw to the left. So when we increase power, the nose will naturally wanna to yaw to the left. And the reverse happens when we decrease power. We get less force on that rudder, so when we decrease power, the nose will wanna yaw to the right. Now another interesting thing happens when we increase or decrease power. If we're in normal level flight now, I'm doing 100 knots and the aircraft is level. If I increase my thrust or power, we're gonna get more airflow going over the wings and we're gonna get more, um, both more thrust and more lift being produced. And the nose is gonna to wanna to pitch up in relation to the horizon. And likewise, if I reduce my power, I'm gonna get less thrust available, less lift being produced, and the nose is gonna pitch down in relation to the horizon. So the effect of power and our propeller on the aircraft is pretty straightforward. So if we're, we're cruising along at 100 knots and I increase my power, the nose is gonna to wanna to pitch up and yaw to the left. If I then decrease my power, the nose is gonna to wanna to then pitch down and yaw to the right. Now depending on the type of training aircraft you use, it, it, can, it can be quite severe or it can be quite subtle. In the sling aircraft, it's quite subtle, which you'll be seeing later. Okay, so that, we just looked at our, our, our primary effects and our secondary and further effects. We're now gonna look at some, uh, what we call different control servers that we use for takeoff and landing. And we call these, here, these items here we talked about before, flaps. Now all flaps are, are a lift generating device. So we use flaps for landing and takeoff. They basically create more lift, so we don't need as much runway to take off, and we can land at a slower speed and use less uh, runway to land. In the sling aircraft, we generally use one stage of flap for takeoff, and for landing, we use two stages. We also have what we call our trim. Now, our trim is generally situated on the elevator, but the trim can, can be on the, either the, both the elevator, rudder, and earlier ones, but that's mainly for larger aircraft. For training aircraft, we generally only have a trim on our elevator. Now, the, the idea of the trim is just to reduce the control column pressure for the pilot. So all trim is is a little wing situated on the back of the elevator that actually moves up and down, and the pilot has a control in the aircraft that he can move this, what we call a trim tab, up and down. So basically, if you're, for instance, in a climb, you can feel that control column pressure and the stick wanting to move forward. You can actually use that trim to get rid of that pressure on the control column so the control column will stay where you want it to stay. And we'll go into a bit more detail how the trim uh, works in real life in our next lesson, which is straight and level. Okay, that brings us to the end of our effects of controls lesson. Let's go and actually do the lesson in the air now.